So what's so good about Pizza Tower? Hmm, what's not so good about Pizza Tower? That's the easier question to answer. <sighs> Alright, I got something. I just booted up the game for the first time and I got a couple of texts I needed to respond to and then the scary pizza man jumped out at me. It traumatized me and I had to sleep with my lights on for a week. In all seriousness, I love Easter eggs like this, but unfortunately I had it spoiled on one of Cybershell's streams. You know, the guy people compare me to sometimes? To be fair, I did say Sonic the Hedgehog in a similar voice. Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. How to stay on topic. Separate your videos into categories. The story. Pepino's pizza place is threatened by a giant pizza, so he has to travel to a tower to stop it. Pretty solid story, I suppose. The story is kept intentionally simple, but what isn't is the game's presentation, with tons of wacky characters showing up, some of which seem to have a history of a main character, without ever flat out stating it. I love when you're racing to the end of each level, you'll just have these different chefs guiding you. It feels like there's so much unexplained history in this game with its characters, but that's exactly the way it should be. It's a game that's throwing you right into a bizarre world with an MS Paint aesthetic, and as a result it never runs out of steam, and consistently stays interesting and entertaining, with an outstanding sense of Humor. The ways they go off model with Pepino is genuinely hilarious. But yeah, this is a very fast paced game, which no surprise, I like a lot. Once you get used to the game's controls, I feel like you could just zone out while playing this game as you find a pattern. But then it'll throw you off with a new mechanic or time trial just to wake you up again. The levels all have similar layouts, and yet no level is the same as the other, with new things to engage with, whether it be cows that kick you behind them, which can either help you or set you back, a chicken sidekick that you can grab onto hooks and attack enemies for you, a section where you just randomly get to play as two new characters with different moves, a level where you turn into a ghost and the only way you can proceed through the stage is if you eat ghost peppers to gain speed. It's a really creative game that never offers you the same experience every time you start a new level, but it keeps the level's layout similar enough to where you also don't find yourself getting frustrated by the new gimmicks each stage throws in. It never becomes too unfamiliar. Also, no gimmick added in the game serves as a pace killer. Each of them just creates its own rules, but still demands you move through the level quickly. Like the night upgrade, for example. You need to maintain your slide in if you want to proceed on the level, but doing so properly keeps you moving. That's what every power-up or gimmick in this game is there for, to keep you going after a new obstacle is brought up. There wasn't a single one that I disliked. Even when I thought I finally made it to one I was going to hate with there being a miniature golf theme level, they found ways to make it work. Not only that, but look at this little golf ball character, I love the design. You are consistently beating him over the head with a golf club, but he's just got the biggest smile on his face and has such a happy walk cycle, it's just brilliant. The boss fights are also a lot of fun. There's an easier phase 1 that helps you learn how to avoid all of their attacks, and then a phase 2 which repeats the same moves from the first part but makes the boss faster and throws a lot more shit on the screen. The levels in this game are pretty charitable, you probably won't have to replay a lot of them in order to proceed. Your skill level mainly comes from trying to get a good score on the level and at the very end of the game, but even if you do a piss poor job, you can proceed to the next level. The boss fights on the other hand, you will probably die a lot as they actually are kinda challenging. It's really the only part of the game where skill is needed in order to proceed. Skill or a lot of patience. But I do think they're more than fair. It certainly took me a lot of tries to beat these guys, but each boss is very memorable and throws in new mechanics of their own. There's a lot of details that I really like in this game. The tutorial music, the great title card for each level, the many different ways you can get this guy to move, the pose button that you think is just there for shits and giggles but apparently can also be used to block attacks, holy shit that was a cool idea, and uh, thank you chat for uh, helping me discover that. Uh, press C before getting... Wait, is that this button? Wait, it is. Press C before getting hit. Oh, that might be... I should try... Wait, let me see. What the fuck? <laughs> That's... I didn't know that! Jesus, I thought that was just for show. That's amazing! I am far from the first person to tell you this, but Pizza Tower is just great. I don't have any issues with it at all. The entire experience was fun, the entire experience was funny, and the entire experience was very imaginative. It's one of the best indie games I've ever played, and an outstanding alternative to Wario Land, with that series no longer having new entries. If you ask me for an example of a perfect game, Pizza Tower would be one that comes to mind. It just excels at what it's going for, and creates an experience that doesn't get old start to finish. Check it out if you haven't yet, although a lot of you probably already have, the game got all the attention it deserved. I swear when I went to too many games this year you couldn't enter a room without seeing someone dressed as Pepino. There were even people with booths dressed as Pepino. It was one of the year's biggest hits, that's for sure.